Today we're going to be looking at how to include a rhythm component into your right hand when hymn playing. Now, traditionally, the right hand's role in hymn playing is to play the melody, and that is still true. The left hand's role is primarily the rhythm and the accompaniment. But there are times, particularly in faster, more gospel style songs, that the right hand sharing the role of the rhythm can add a really energetic feel to your playing. If you want to learn more about what the right hand's role and the left hand role and different fill-ins for different time signatures, I encourage you to check out my course Foundations in Hymn Playing, available on the website. You can take it using just a hymnal of your choice, and I think you'll gain a lot of fresh ideas to incorporate into your own hymn playing. We're going to look at two songs today that teach this rhythm pattern. Are You Washed in the Blood in A flat and There is Power in the Blood in B flat. Now I'm playing from the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs hymnal and those are the keys that these songs are in. But they're also the keys that you'll find them in just about any hymnal. So follow along in the hymnal of your choice. First we'll start off with There's Power in the Blood and I'm going to play through a verse of it to show you what I'm talking about and then we'll break it down into slower motion. This is a faster 4-4 four, four timing song. So if you notice, my left hand pretty much played quarter notes, one, two, three, four, alternating that bass pattern. Now the reason this pattern works well, where my left hand plays just an octave on beats one, two, three, and four, and then my right hand actually plays the melody with the chord in the middle on the and, one and two and three and four like that, is because it lets it have a faster sound. I could just use a traditional octave chord sound, but it would sound slower like this. So playing with the right hand sharing the role of the rhythm lets it have a faster feel. So what I'm doing in my right hand is I'm playing the melody in an octave with fingers one and five. I'm keeping it octave throughout. One, and two. I'm putting the rest of the chord in the middle of my right hand playing against the left hand. So if I took out the melody, what you would be left with is which is a great rhythm pattern. Now we add the melody back into it and I'll take out my left hand so you can notice in particular how my right hand changes chords. I'm starting on a B flat chord with a melody that is an F, wood. So one and two and now that word would you be right before the word free falls on the and one and two and so there I play it all together as a blocked chord free from your word power, I'm on an F chord. My melody note is an A, so that's why it's on the outside. So I would play a C and an F. You can even throw that E flat in there if you want to make it an F7. One and two. Now my melody note has changed to a C. 
I'm still on an F chord, so I play the E flat, F, and A in the middle here. B flat chord. Together. Together. Now I'm on an E flat chord. My melody note is a G, so what goes in the middle is a B flat and an E flat. There's a B flat chord. My melody note is a B flat, and it's the word there's right before the last phrase of the verse that comes on the and of four. Vic, to, re, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. So you notice what comes in the middle changes depending on what chord I'm on. The melody note is always on the outside. And then I'm playing against it. One, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and. Now there I can change chords because I'm headed into the chorus. That adds a little bit of a transition. So let's see how to add our left hand into that last phrase leading into the chorus. So notice, even though my melody note is still a D and I'm still on a B flat chord, I changed what came in the middle because I wanted to add that B flat seven. The B flat seven chord leads into the E flat chord. Now, if you notice, that is a dotted half note on that C, so I hold it out for three beats. In this case, there's a great place for my left hand to then add some fill-ins, or even let my right hand have a melodic fill-in. So you don't think that you have to stay locked into just playing the inner notes on the ends of every beat, or the last half of every beat. When you have a dotted half note in your melody, that's a great place to add a fill in, whether it be with your right hand or your left or both. Let's see if we can find something to add there. I'll start at the beginning of the chorus. Then I can pick back up with the pattern. This is super effective because it helps you maintain the energy and the speed without your hand having to do so much back and forth that your left hand would typically do in just a good octave chord motion. Now if you feel really ambitious, you can move your right hand up an octave, still do the exact same rhythm pattern we've looked at, but let your left hand actually keep an octave chord, octave chord pattern. This is a little bit advanced, so just attempt it if you're really ready for a challenge. It's a lot of fun, but it's not necessary. There's always lots of fun ways to add more to your hymn playing. Let's look at one more song and see how this pattern works in a different key. The song Are You Washed in the Blood in A flat. You're going to notice a lot of similarities. I still play the melody in an octave and I still put the chord on the and or the back half of every beat. Notice that the chord inversion changes. Even though I'm staying on an A flat chord the entire time, my melody notes change. Therefore, the position of those inner notes is also going to change. 
you want to get really familiar with every possible inversion of each chord. So an A-flat chord has an A-flat, a C, and an E-flat. I can play those three notes in any combination and it's still an A-flat chord. So my melody note moves and I'm changing the inversion that I use of that A-flat chord and then the D-flat chord and back. So let's watch that again as I start at the beginning. Notice how even though I'm keeping the melody note preserved, my inner notes are going to change. I stay on an A-flat melody note, but my chord actually changes on the word ing, cleansing. I'm going to a D-flat chord. So that's why I moved my middle fingers from a C and an E-flat up to a D-flat and an F. That preserves the chord. It's still a D-flat chord. The melody is still the same, but the chord changes. there. That's what I'll play for the word the right there. Washed. Another dotted half note on the word lamb. That's a great place for my left hand to add a fill in. I'll play the chorus up to tempo, but go back and watch these sections again if you need to practice hands separately. That's a great way for you to master this skill. Don't try to go too fast too soon. Let yourself take time to figure out what chord you're on, keep the melody on the outside, put the rest of the chord in the middle, and play it against the melody on the back half of every beat. That's going to let your right hand share the role with the left hand of the rhythm and help your playing stay nice and energetic. I think you'll find that learning this skill is well worth the effort and will add a lot of excitement to your playing. I do have the sheet music available for Power in the Blood on the website and you can actually see what that pattern looks like in motion on the page where the melody is on the outside and the chord is on the middle. For lots more resources, please check out the website at natalierainsmusic.com.